Hey, welcome back. Have you ever had an experience of uh, breaking a leg or an ankle or spraining a knee or ankle and having to be on crutches? And then uh, when it's time to start walking, uh, walking again, you, you, you throw away the crutches. <clears throat> it's a little scary, isn't it, to have the crutch removed? Um, let me give you some examples of crutches that uh, we have removed from our lives. So maybe uh, you, you get a divorce. Marriage ends, or a romance is broken, or you have a, I don't know, disagreement with a friend, you lose a friend, or lose a job, or uh, you get sick, or uh, you have a terminal illness. Um, you thought you were healthy, and all of a sudden that crutch is taken away from you. Uh, maybe a financial disaster. Um, every once in a while, God will remove crutches from our lives uh, so that we can learn to depend on Him. I'd like you to share with people in your group uh, a, a time when you had a crutch removed from you. Uh, did it help you rely on God or did it turn you away from God? Uh, just share that for a few minutes, okay? Uh, David... King David, the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel, had an experience of having crutches removed from his life. Uh, David, uh, if you remember, was anointed the second king of Israel, and the Spirit of God uh, came upon him uh, from that day on. Uh, then he had the experience of defeating Goliath, the huge Philistine, uh, amazing victory, and everybody loved him, people loved him. Uh, Saul called him to work at the, at the palace, and uh, he would play the lyre uh, and, and sing uh, to, 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 de, uh, to Saul. Uh, Saul uh, chose him to, to be a leader in the army. He would go out, and he was very successful in the army. Uh, then Saul gave him his daughter in marriage, Michal. And uh, so he sat at the palace uh, for dinner every night, uh, he, he made good friends with Jonathan, Saul's son. And uh, so David had it made. Then one by one, every one of those crutches were removed from David. I just want to read you about some of these. If you want to look in your Bible, I'm going to start in 1 Samuel 18, uh, verse 6. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul, with singing and dancing with joyful songs, as they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. So it made uh, Saul angry that people loved uh, David more than him. And from uh, that point on, uh, David began to have his crutches uh, removed. Uh, so verse 10 of that chapter, the next day an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand and he hurled it saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him uh, twice. And then uh, verse 9 of chapter 19 but an evil spirit from the Lord came on Saul as he was sitting in his house with his spear in his hand. While David was playing the lyre, Saul tried to pin him to the wall with his spear, but David eluded him as Saul drove the spirit into the spear into the wall. That night, David made good his escape. So David, that night, essentially lost his position in the palace and in the army. Then he lost his wife. Uh, Saul sent men to David's house to watch it and to kill him in the morning, but Michal... David's wife warned him, if you don't run for your life tonight, tomorrow you'll be killed. So McCall let David down through a window and he fled and escaped. So he lost his, his wife. And then in verse 18, uh, we read, When David had fled and made his escape, he went to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. Then he and Samuel went to Nioth and stayed there. A word came to Saul. David is in Nioth at Ramah, so he sent men to capture him. 
So at that point, uh, David had to leave uh, Samuel, and so he lost his, his uh, spiritual mentor. And then in chapter 20 of uh, 1 Samuel, verse 1, Then David fled from Nioth at Ramah and went to Jonathan and asked, What have I done? What is my crime? How have I wronged your father that he is trying to kill me? And uh, through a series of events, Jonathan said, I don't think my dad wants to kill you. But then he found out uh, that his dad really did want to kill him. Verse 32, why should he be put to death? This is Jonathan talking to his father, Saul. What has he done? Talking about David. Jonathan asked his father, but Saul hurled his spear at him to kill him. Then Jonathan knew that his father intended to kill David. Jonathan got up from the table in fierce anger. Uh, so then Jonathan said his goodbyes to David and said, you got you to gotta flee. And, uh, and, and so David never saw Jonathan again. He lost his friend. So all these crutches removed from his life. Why? Well, um, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why is the right question. But as a result, David had to lean on God even more closely than he had before. All right, so uh, that's all I have to say today, and uh, hopefully you have a good study in your uh, group. Uh, go through the verses, go through the journals, um, and uh, pray for each other. Hope you have a great time. Thank you.